The Sopranos is an American crime drama television series created by David Chase. The story revolves around Tony Soprano, played by James Gandolfini, a New Jersey-based Italian-American mobster portraying the difficulties that he faces as he tries to balance his family life with his role as the leader of a criminal organization. These are explored during his therapy sessions with psychiatrist Jennifer Melfi, played by Lorraine Bracco. The series features Tony's family members, mafia colleagues, and rivals in prominent roles, most notably his wife, Carmela, played by Edie Falco, and his protege slash distant cousin, Christopher Moltisanti, played by Michael Imperioli. Today we bring you 10 things you didn't know about The Sopranos. Welcome to the live television. Tell him, KK. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Number 10, The Sopranos started as a movie pitch. Before The Sopranos creator David Chase developed the story of Tony Soprano and his family for television, he pitched it as a movie about a mobster who re-enters therapy to discuss problems he has with his mother. According to Chase, his manager, Lloyd Brown, made him consider TV for the first time by telling him, I want you to know that we believe that you have inside you a great television series. Number 9. Livia Soprano is loosely based on David Chase's mother. Tony Soprano's tough mother. Livia Soprano, who was played by Nancy Merchand, was loosely based on David Chase's real-life mother. When Chase abandoned the movie idea, the tension between Tony and his mother Livia provided the central conflict for the show's first season. Number 8. The Sopranos shared 28 cast members with Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. According to INDB, six regular Soprano cast members appeared in Goodfellas. Lorraine Bracco, Michael Imperioli, Tony Sorico, Vincent Pastore, Frank Vincent, and Joseph R. Ganascoli. 10 recurrent Soprano characters and 11 one-time guest stars also appeared in the 1990 Martin Scorsese masterpiece. Number 7. Ray Liotta was approached about a role. In 2001, Today Show interview, Liotta said that he was offered a part in The Sopranos without saying which one, but he turned it down to focus on his film career. In 2003, Liotta corroborated his story for the university newspaper The GW Hatchet. Having done Goodfellas, I mean that's pretty much the ultimate in Mafia everyday life. And that show is pretty much structured around Tony Soprano. There was no way I was gonna shine, he said. It just didn't seem like the right thing to do. I love James Gandolfini as an actor. I think he's great, but my ego is as big as anybody's. Number 6. Steven Van Zandt was David Chase's first pick for Tony. Before he auditioned James Gandolfini, Chase wanted Steve Van Zandt guitar player for Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band to play Tony. I used to listen to music a lot on headphones and look at Springsteen's LP and Steve Van Zandt's face always grabbed me, Chase told Vanity Fair in 2012. He had this similarity to Al Pacino in The Godfather. Then we were casting a pilot and my wife Denise and I were watching TV. Steven came on VH1 when they were inducting the Rascals into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Steven gave a speech. He was very very funny and magnetic and I said to my wife, that guy has to be in the show. The producers didn't want to gamble on the first time actor for the show's lead, so Chase offered to write a part for Van Zandt, the character Silvio Dante. Number 5. Tony wasn't originally supposed to be such a tough guy. Chase didn't view Tony as such a ruthless character. This came straight from James Gandolfini. In a 2007 interview, Chase said, Jim showed me early on how much of a prick that guy would have to be. The first day we shot, there was a scene where Christopher said he was going to sell his story to Hollywood. In that script, it said something like, Tony slaps him. But when we shot it, all of a sudden Jim was out of his seat. He picked up Michael by his neck, by the collar, had him almost off the ground and said, What are you, crazy? And I thought, of course this man is ruthless. That guy's surviving the mom. He's really a dangerous person. He's not a fun guy. Number 4. Dr. Melfi was modeled on Chase's real life therapist. In a 2006 interview with Rolling Stone, Chase revealed that Lorraine Kaufman, his therapist during the time he conceptualized The Sopranos, provided the inspiration for Dr. Melfi. She had the same way of cutting through your bullshit. Number 3. Livia Soprano was supposed to die in the first season. Chase originally intended for Tony to succeed in suffocating his mother with a pillow after she tries to have him killed in season 1. However, Nancy Marchand, who played Livia, was sick with cancer during the time on the show. She asked Chase, David, just keep me working. He graciously obliged. Number 2. Michael Imperioli thought he blew his audition. It is almost impossible to imagine The Sopranos without Michael Imperioli as Tony's nephew slash cousin Christopher Moltisanti. But as Imperioli tells it, he almost didn't land a gig. They brought me in and I met with David. I thought he hated my audition because David is a poker face guy. He kept giving me notes and giving me direction and I walked out of there and I was like, I blew that one. Number 1. To settle disputes over actors salaries, James Gandolfini gave each actor his own money. After season 4, production on The Sopranos was delayed due to pay disputes with HBO. The cast staged a sit-in that shut down the set. To 
help quell tensions, Gandolfini split his bonus among the regular cast members, giving them each $33,333. Much of Paulie's storyline came from Tony Sirico's life. Before Tony Sirico was Paulie Walnut's Gaultieri, he was a criminal. Seriously. According to the Los Angeles Times, his rap sheet was longer than his acting credits. 28 arrests and 27 acting jobs. And as both Sirico and Chase tell it, the similarities between Sirico and his character didn't end there. Paulie's neat freak tendencies and unusual living arrangements was transferred directly from Sirico's real life to the screen. I lived with mom for 16 years before she passed. David knew that was going in. That became one of my storylines, he told Vanity Fair. The Bada Bing scenes were filmed at a real New Jersey strip club. The Sopranos was filmed on location in New Jersey and New York, and on sound stages at the Silver Cup Studios in Queens. The Bing, however, was no studio creation. Those scenes were shot at Satin Dolls, a gentleman's club on the State Route 17 in Lodi, New Jersey. Exterior shots of the Sopranos' home were shot at a private residence in New Jersey. The Soprano family resides at the fictional 633 Stag Trail Road in the real North Cladwell, New Jersey. All the exterior shots were shot on location while the interior shots were shot at a studio. The Sopranos went on to be the most celebrated series in TV history. It remains a cult classic and it influenced all series that came after it.